Hello everyone and welcome to Faye's Menagerie. Some in my community may be familiar with Faye's work as she is a talented artist behind such models like the Pelagonas, Fiomia and the Doa deck, while others in the ARC community may be familiar with her contributions to Paleo ARC in the form of the Evo Giga. And today I am the lucky person who gets to take a deep look at her brand new mods and her brand new Plateosaurus. Now before we dive right in, let's learn a little bit about our new dino from the dossier. In the wild, despite its status as a primitive Triassic oddity, Platyosaurus amabilis has adapted easily to the treacherous environment of the island. It is a relatively small animal compared to the giants I've come across. Regardless of size, this sauropodomorph packs a mean punch, as its incredibly powerful forelimbs can knock a person unconscious with a single strike. Platyosaurus amabilis has also been known to pick up and crush small animals to death if it feels threatened or annoyed by it. Meanwhile, domesticated versions are incredibly strong for their size, which makes it an ideal compact beast of burden and mount. It's surprisingly fast and can cover great distances. However, this is not the main reason many tribes decide to tame a Platyosaurus. This dinosaur has the ability to digest and break down the toxic elements of Narcobaris within its ingluvies. When the Narcobaris are in the ingluvies, special enzymes break down the toxic elements of the Narcobaris, which results in a super sweet jam-like mixture that is irresistible to herbivores. Now personally, that sounds absolutely wonderful because I've always been very annoyed by the lack of a mutton equivalent for herbivores. It should have been veggie cake, it wasn't. So this sounds like the Platyosaurus is going to really feel an important niche. Now the Platyosaurus has been described to be basically almost identical to a parasaur and that includes the way it spawns as well. There is the regular variant, the aberrational variant, and of course the Eden or Rockwell variant as well. And I can't wait to see all of them because Faye has massively impressed me with her modeling capabilities. So to see like actually come to life, you know, not just a Giga, but a new dino of her entire design, I'm really hyped. And yes, with it being identical to the Parasaur, it means that it should spawn in every Parasaur, you know, esque location. And therefore on most maps as well. Oh, I see a couple of Parasaurs, but do I see a Platyosaurus? Ah, not yet, not yet. Oh, I see one! Oh, it looks so graceful! Oh, that blends in nicely! I'm a big stickler for uh, dinosaur mods when the dinos don't really feel like they belong. Oh, wow! So, I don't really know much about these at all. I don't know if they're aggressive, I don't know if they're temperamental. Again, very identical to the Parasaur, so I would assume they're passive. You know, I just had to get rid of the compies first. Right then, let's take a good look. So level 10, of course I get a low level 1 first. Oh, it looks wonderful. It's eyes. It sounds. Hey, are you aggressive? You look awesome. Right, so no passive taming, no passive feeding. It seems to be very docile. I, I, feel, I feel guilty, but I'm going to punch it. Yep, just like a parasol. <laughs> I feel really bad for doing that, but you got to find out. It can be Bernard. Let me see. So 70 on the headshot. Mm, yes, we're not testing <laughs> headshot versus body shot just yet. I'll try to find like another high level one. But with it being again identical to the parasol, I would assume very tames, most likely. Okay, so just to confirm, yep, it is just a very, very typical herbivore berry tame. Prefers to measure berries. I swear, like, modders are becoming so advanced nowadays. I just have to check because you never know. Sometimes you get, like, some really crazy, mysterious mechanic. It's nice to have one that's, like, really nice and entry level. I also just want to note that I really like the portraits. Uh, some portraits I find can be a bit hit or miss. This one suits really nicely. I love its arms. Oh, yeah, the dossier does that justice. They look awesome. Definitely look like they can pack a punch. Oh, well, look at you. Scale work is lovely as well, and I can imagine that the patterning will be really great for color regions for mutation breeding. Oh, I see such potential in these! So first things first, I need a Platyosaurus saddle, and that is thankfully only level 15 in comparison to the Parasaur level, which is level 9, and the Iguanodon level 30. So yeah, the Platyosaurus is a really nice entry-level creature. It's a bit of fiber, hide, and a little bit of wood. Oh, I love the sound! Oh, I really love the sounds. Faye did a fantastic job on the sounds for this creature. Can I get you out of the trees? Oh, there we go. Oh, I love the way it walks as well. Right then, so. Let's get you all saddled up then. The saddle, I love the little, uh, <laughs> the little roll of cloth in the back there. So. Oh, actually, it's a bit of a slow. Is it getting momentum? Nothing, just my imagination. It's a decent speed. It is a very decent speed. 
It can jump, which is always a very, very nice addition in my opinion. I love jumping dinosaurs. Oh, it looks, it looks so regal. I really, really like this. And again, I gotta stress, I feel like it fits the uh, overall arc environment in my personal opinion. Uh, some modded dinos tend to look a bit, uh, a bit too artificial, a bit too foreign. This one fits nicely. It is smooth. It handles very, very well. No clunky turning. A bit of a medium turn range, but considering, you know, the size of the creature and the speed, it feels really, really good. Melee. Oh, I love that. I like how it almost looks just slightly derpy. It just helps make it feel a bit more realistic. That's a typical left click attack. Right click is a, a bit of an intimidating bite. Again, I love the sound of that. I love how just everything animates is so smooth. See? Oh, okay. So I take it as to pick creatures up. Any other abilities? I'm not really sure what else. Oh. It just did something then. I think that may... Oh, it's just a little idle animation. Oh, so if you just leave it idle, it just does like a little, little XA, a little growl. Okay, well, I'm awaiting an embarrassing amount of time. So, uh... oh, there you go. <laughs> I love that. That's so cool. Right, so of course, this is only a level uh, 14. It's got very nice weight. Can I just say? Um, oh, and yes, of course, it's main ability. We'll get about that in a second. It, can I just say it's got very nice base weights? That's always like another thing is that uh, when you've got an early game creature, it's so annoying. Even in the early game when some creatures just have no weight. I'm looking at you, Tyranodons. This is really, really nice. So the main appeal of the Patiosaurus is the ability to ferment Narca berries. Okay, so while it's fermenting then, Oh, I see. So it starts off slow and then it immediately speeds up. So there's a little bit of momentum, but a very short charge. It just really makes it feel like the creature is, you know, beginning to walk. It's something that you can easily ignore. It's not too jarring at all, but it's just a little detail. Wow, that really makes it feel alive. How much damage do you do? Honestly, for a level 14. For a level 14, and considering it's double hits, that's really not bad. Okay. <laughs> Do I dare fighting turtles? Level 10, level 60. Let's give it a go. I like that. So it's actually more like 26 damage and it's quick. It's very, very quick. What about the right click? Seven. Bear in mind these are armored creatures. This feels really, really good. I am liking this a lot. And the fact that I harvest as well, that is such a nice touch as well. This is a really, really friendly early game tame. I like this a lot. Now, since we're doing 13 damage, to give you a quick point into melee, you are now doing, after your adorable animation, you are now doing, okay, still 13. It is very low level after all. Okay, honestly, that was quite a convincing fight. I mean, again, I'm only level 14, level 15. Yeah, I got the saddle and yeah, it was just a slow ass turtle, but that really put up a very, very commendable fight. And in the process, I was getting fiber. It's a fiber gatherer as well. Oh, I am loving this thing more and more. <gasps> There's another one. There is another one that was 70. Yep, yeah, I think we all know what has to be done. So thankfully, oh, well, that one's gorgeous. Oh my God, I love that one. So earlier we found, oh, right arrow. Earlier we found it uh, 70 damage to the headshot. 35, so it does actually have a headshot indeed. I feel like that the male was a little bit girthier. Oh, actually no, 35. 70. It's got a very small headshot. Okay, so while that one's unconscious, let's get a couple of more berries quickly then. Its harvesting range is huge. Thank goodness. There's something I've always hated about the Parasaur is that its harvesting range is so pathetically tiny. This, again, feels really good. Faye has made a very player-friendly tame. This is really, really good. Oh, I, I love that. He just gave himself a little scratch. So this is a funny thing I just noticed while I'm waiting for the male to tame, as I was just kind of, you know, like running around and playing with, uh, <laughs> playing with the female. If I get up close to her, she kind of looks at me from the side. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, okay, she kind of looks at me from the side, which is really fantastic because, you know, she's a herbivore. She wouldn't look at me front forward, even though she absolutely could. It's just that, that, again, the little details are really, really nice. Why is that Sarko not attacking? That's really confusing. I don't think that's related to the mod. I think that's just a, 
RKI at its finest. Oh yeah, so and another detail I think we'd all appreciate to know while we're waiting for the male to tame up. Can the Argentavis carry these? Surely, I think they could. And, oh, actually. Oh, they can, they can. Okay, I just uh, <laughs> missed. Yep. Can be carried by an Argentavis. That's a very, very nice touch. And, not gonna lie, it looks kind of cute. Well, until that happens, it looked kind of cute. Oh, hey, look at that. We've got our very first fermented Narco Berry. Five hour spoil timer in the inventory, one hour. That's really, really quite uh, forgiving, actually. And I need six of them to make some Narco Berry jam. Or, I'm quite curious, actually. So, so far, you are getting about about roughly 2.5 3% taming per bite let's give you some fermented narco berries oh that gave significantly more actually that's about a 5.5 percent i think oh how good is that i really really like that i really like you know get a uh, crappy low level one use that to get yourself a nice bigger one much quicker that really made an impact lovely and there is our brand new level 101 male. Let's check you out then. Well, also the mate boost as well. Right then, so that's gonna be awesome. Currently stats are, ooh, 1300 health, 500 weight. What are the actual stats actually? Um, okay, so overall, bit of a averagely rolled creature altogether. The stats aren't really that amazing anywhere. Just, you know, a little bit of high health. So with that in mind, yeah, the 500 weight is really, really nice. 720 stamina is a lot to work with. So. Let's go fight a Sarko. That seems like a really smart idea. Ooh! <laughs> 26 damage per slap. That is really, really good, actually. And, uh, yep, yeah, quickly destroyed. <laughs> what level was this Sarko? It was level 20. I mean, I know it's not, right, the most impressive stat in the world. But that is really, really good. And it got prime meat. Oh, it's an early prime meat harvester. Even better. So, we've seen the animations, the combat, a bit of its utility. One thing I really want to check out, actually, is how much stats it gets per level. Which might be a bit of an odd one to check out, but I'm sure anyone with 10 gigas will appreciate, you know, <laughs> knowing how much you get per point. So, for the health, you get about 100 odd, more like 80, I'd say. You get about, about 70 or 80 stamina per point. Wait to get a good, easy 20 per point. Movement speed is 1.3, which is really quite generous. And melee, you get about just over 3%. These are all like very rough numbers, but just to give you a bit of an overall idea. Actually saying that, what are your animations even like, quickly? <laughs> I love that. That's a great leveling animation. Nothing too obnoxious, but still, you know, gives it personality. And can I just say, that jump really is just fantastic. Again, it feels like a nice, real animal. How do you do it in the water? Uh, let's see then. Your swimming speed is... It's fairly slow. I mean, you can't really expect too much, can you? It's decent. I mean, some creatures just feel cripplingly slow in the water. It's slow. It's not terribly slow. It's usable. Oh, I tell you what, I nearly forgot the most important ability. Oh, there's a couple of more. Oh, look at the colors on that one. <gasps> level 15. That's a really nice one as well. Level 15 male, female. Oh, so they're definitely not rare. I like that. But yes, I was going to say, I forgot one of the most important abilities about this funky lad. Come over here. You sense what's coming. Oh, did I? Oh, look at it. <laughs> I love that so much. I'm just, I'm just carrying a dodo, as one does. So, how do I crush it? Oh, so I can hit- oh, actually, that's really handy. You can hit it. Uh, no, stop, stop! Okay, you can hit it <laughs> while you've picked it up. That's really, really handy. I see dillos. Can I pick up a dillo? Yes, I can. So I can bite it. I can still, like, just slap it as I pick it up. May as well just kill two of these really quick. Okay, and we'll just pick you up. It's a really nice range, by the way. Again, this is really, really player-friendly, like gameplay-friendly. I wonder, can I pick things up while I'm swimming? Like, surely not, right? Oh, ow. No, I shouldn't think so. But you can still attack really nice in the water. In fact, this is, unironically, a <laughs> not a bad underwater mount. I would not recommend it. But if you're in a pinch like I am, you have the option, and the option is always welcome. Oh, raptors! Okay, well, can I pick up a raptor? No, I can't, but it's a good little test for a general combat. 
Oh, they are doing a bit of damage to me. Then again, it is 3v2. Well, 4 if you count the Dilophosaur. But we are making quick work. Yeah, you know what? Oh, of course. Yeah, okay. It makes sense. Level uh, level 17 died to 115. That does make sense. And it was the alpha. But again, I can't just say, these guys really stand their ground very, very well. I mean, I am also running primitive saddles. It's an important thing to note as well. And the Raptor probably harvested a few times from his fallen brethren. So again, like all things considered, that's a really, really good fight. Can I survive this? If I like backpedal a little bit? Mm, no, it doesn't delay his hits at all. I might just be able to come ahead on this one. Oh, it's going to be so close. I did. I had no right surviving that encounter. And yet I did. Yeah, I think this would be my go-to early game tame just from now on. So, while I'm waiting for these lovely lizards to all produce a whole bunch of fermented knuckle berries and some of the knuckle berry jam, I think we would check out the different variants too. So in the middle, we have the regular island, well not just island, but like the, the normal variant, if we will, which naturally can come in quite a selection of colours. I'm sure there's many, many more, but this is just the first five I spawned out. The aberrant, I have to say, I really love these. These are vibrant. The markings are an interesting choice because they're not too um, not too crazy, not too overdone. They look natural. So another thing I find in some other mods where sometimes the aberrant markings can look a bit too weird, a bit too artificial or just too much. These ones fit really nicely and I like how they also change the colours themselves, especially this red one in the middle here. And again, just the, it's not too overbearing. It doesn't cover the entire creature. It's not obnoxious. It doesn't take away from the stripes on the rear. It's just in the one place it needs to be and the face and that's all. And uh, Faye did say, make sure to check these during the night. So set time of day to midnight. Ooh, <laughs> the eyes. Oh, I like that. Yeah, so you'd definitely be able to spot these from a distance for sure. Oh, wow. I really, oh, I love the eyes. And then we also have the Eden ones, aka the Rockwell Gen 2 variants. These, it's interesting because these look like they'd be more fitting as a... Oh, actually, no. Oh no, I was about to say, these look like they'd be better off as the original ones. But I just noticed how stripy their faces are. Oh, that's remarkable. <laughs> They're adorable when they all look at you at the same time, the little side-eyed glare from that one. Yeah, no, this one, I like this one. This one's really, really good. And it's actually, you know, quite deceptively tall, can I just say? These are fantastic. And one more really subtle feature about these guys, which I initially thought was just a color region, but FaZe pointed out, is actual sexual dimorphism. And that is their eye colors. If we look at the original, you know, I'm gonna call it island. We look at the island variants. The females have red eyes and the males all have blue eyes. It's very consistent, as you can see here. The R variants all just all together have these uh, dark eye colors, but then the aberration ones or the aberrants, their eye colors or eye color region is matched to their markings. So you can see very clearly with this blue and red one here, very vibrant red eyes. This one's here got very vibrant kind of white-ish eyes. Orange It's a really nice touch. And additionally, while we're talking about color regions, she's also mentioned that Patiosaurus that spawn in a desert biomes or in a bog gen 1 biome also have different color regions. So they're not different variants, but just spawn in naturally different colors. Now, one very important thing about our Patiosaurus, which will make it a very necessary late game creature, not just as a mount for the early and mid game, but also as a viable asset to your teams in the late game, the Nagaberry Jam isn't there only for taming creatures, but also to provide a buff to your dinos, to all of your herbivores. So, let's get some in here then, and it... Oh, it automatically ate some. Oh, probably, you know, for food. So if I use some... I gave a buff. Herbivore Justice, your pet is healing. 10% speed, 20% damage, and 25% resistance. Oh, that is huge. I thought it was just gonna be like a little healing snack. Not a uh, full on buff, that's really, really cool. So for context, it actually does tick quite slowly in general. And if I apply the Narcabrea Jam, it is rapidly healing more. Oh wow, so it seems to double the passive regen. Can I use a Veggie Cake as well? Yes. They stack. Wow. <laughs> now I'm very glad I'm a Therizino main when it comes to boss fights. I love Therizinos and <laughs> that's going to make it so much better. And notice the lack of a cooldown. It refreshes. Oh, wow. So it's kind of like a super or a stew, but for your dino. 
so you can continuously refresh it. Now, it does mean it won't auto-eat it, so unlike a veggie cake, which automatically applies, you have to do the jam yourself. Which I guess is really fair, actually, because, you know, it's got a big, like, damage and defensive buff. You wouldn't want that to be, like, a permanent, ongoing thing in your boss army. It'd be a bit too overpowered. But this does make herbivore tames really appealing. Like, actual rideable tames, once you take it off and about when you're playing the game, not just when your boss armies or very niche needs. Oh, I'm really curious what that would mean for, like, certain beasts of burden, such as the Torpor from an Equus, or the harvesting capability of Gatherers, since it increases their damage. I assume it's a multiply on their harvesting as well. It would also make more tanky creatures like the Stegosaurus significantly more tankier, that 25% resistance. That is huge! So one thing that I think would be really cool to actually observe is the difference between the fermented nugget berries and the uh, nugget berry jam compared to all the other foods as well. Since this is meant to be, you know, the, like the new herbivore taming food before kibble, I believe. So it'll be really nice to see it. Of course, you're going to walk away. Hold on, come back. Come back, make it easy for me. Well, close enough. <laughs> so we've got five 150 triceratopses. What I'm going to do then, go chuck the kibble on one. You can have the uh, fermented marker berries. You can have the mejo berries. Over here can have the knuckleberry jam and you can have rock carrots. And we can observe it here. We can't really see, you know, which is which exactly. But I tamed these all or I knocked them all out relatively quickly. And if we just do a little cheeky, maybe this. So now we can recognize which is which. Let's speed it up then quite a bit. Or that thing is causing it to bug out. Yeah, as you can see, <laughs> this one here, that uh, the extra speed is bugging out. So if anything, this should probably actually be higher up. Oh, this is interesting. I see what's happening. The actual Nuggetberry Jam has a five second cooldown. And because of that, it's counting as no food in the inventory. Right, that's definitely a bug. I'll report that. It's safe to say then. It's very safe to say. The Nuggetberry Jam progress should be much, much higher. It looks very behind compared to Kibble. It's actually way better than it seems. Okay, so with this newfound knowledge, I put in some Nuggetberry Jam and the Rock Carrots. That way it should never have the error, you know, put taming food in inventory. It should never, ever drop. And then, of course, I'll put kibble in this one too. And now let's just quickly compare the timing between these two. Okay, this is much more like it. That is kibble on the left, nakaberry jam on the right. Obviously, they're eating at different intervals, so the nakaberry jam keeps on getting slightly ahead. You can see the kibble does more, you know, more bang per buck, but it's really, really good. So nakaberry jam really is the mutton for herbivores. Oh, thank God we have needed that. Right, and for one final thing, let's go check out what the hatchling looks like, because we have to see the baby version. Oh, that is not what I was expecting at all. Very accurate, technically. Wow, that was really unexpected. Right, one fertilized Plateosaurus egg. Let's take a look at you then. Oh, if you want to hatch up, there you go. Oh, it's adorable. There we go, let's quickly just chuck you over here instead where I can actually see you. It uh, <laughs> didn't mutate. Right, let's chuck that in there, give you some food quickly. Oh, look at you! Wow, you are quite the specimen! And as far as uh, baby dinos and arc go, very not derpy. Let me just quickly check actually, so if I just do a uh, cheat set time of day to midnight... Oh, it doesn't quite have its little spots yet! It's okay, I guess it's a puberty thing, but that does look absolutely precious. Now then, let's go ahead then, make you a grown up. Fantastic. Oh, you look just awesome. Because I'm also curious to see what a imprinted version is like. Oh, and by the way, if I hadn't mentioned it already, it does require a saddle to craft these things, by the way. But nonetheless, get a saddle, put that on you. Oh, yeah, this feels wonderful. I really, really love the tail markings. Oh, see, this is a creature that I will happily, you know, just watch while I'm running around in the game. It's just, it's such eye candy. It's really, really nice. And I am curious as to what kind of damage this one can do. Can I pick up a goose? Wait, come here. Uh, no, I can't pick up a goose, actually. Hold on, let me try that again. Let's just quickly try. Well, that's fair. I don't like geese anyway. 35 damage per slap. <laughs> I love these. And it gets polymer too. Okay, so I don't want to make the video, you know, any longer than it needs to be. This has been absolutely awesome. I think I managed to stick in a lot of information, hopefully to help a lot of you guys. You got a couple of more right there. Ah! 
I love them. I love these things. I need this. I'm definitely going to add these into my server as well. These are really fantastic. Oh, and I just beat the crap out of that one. <laughs> Poor thing. Actually, I noticed I did a lot more damage that time. That's another one. There you go. Just a little, a little slap fight. I'm occasionally doing 53 damage. And I'm not sure why. Oh, wow. They have quite a large aggro range, don't they? I didn't even know these other two were around. And it's fleeing. It's fleeing. Oh. Interesting. Um, Morelatops AI, perhaps? I did not think to check that at all. Oh, wow. Well, anyway, as I was going to say, this has been really, really wonderful. This has been an absolute pleasure. Faye, thank you again so much for allowing me to check this out. This has been such a treat. I love that little roar mid-running. That wasn't me. That was just its own AI, its own eye animations. Such a fantastic dancer that really fits the base game beautifully. Great gameplay, great design, great mechanics. Also, very important niche. That would mean it's relevant even in the end game. You know, if you can't be bothered to get kibble, then this will be like the perfect thing in spite of that. Oh my goodness, so, there's so many of them. Like, definitely a parasol spawn. Oh, I love them. They fit so well. Oh, I can't wait to see what more Faye does. This is, of course, only the first addition to the brand new mod, Faye's Menagerie, so you can always expect plenty more to come. Seriously, check out the mod all in the video description down below. You'll know where to find it. Please do take a look. Do consider it. And as always, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a fantastic time with this wonderful dino.